I would put some music and some audio cues in this intro. King Kawasabi, you are under arrest for trespassing on the private property and being really poor. Oh, but Miss Sugawara, I have nowhere else to go. My father died. My mother died. My dog died. My pet lobster died. My house was foreclosed on me. I declared bankruptcy. I sold off 90% of my blood for $10, and I live in a cardboard box. I have nothing else, nor anywhere else to go. Not my problem. Prepare to meet your god. But then again, even you may be too poor for heaven. The day is saved. Thanks to Kitty Sugawara and her loyal compatriots. See you next time on Hollow Tales. It's curious that a vast majority of stories who consume about music tend to overlook or simply downplay the importance of the music creation process. There are exceptions, yes, the most notable to my head being the film Love and Mercy, a Brian Wilson biopic that takes a notable dive into such matters, but you'd be hard pressed to find a watchable, compelling narrative that centers around the meticulous, often time consuming and frustrating dilemma of producing even a single song let alone an entire album of songs. As much as I love music, I can't say I'm an expert in this field. I can't even play a single instrument right, so don't ever go to me about anything requiring technical experience to flesh out. I acknowledge this as someone who, though ignorant of the process, is somewhat knowledgeable in the outcome. I don't know how to create music, but I am someone who knows a lot about how music can make one think or feel much like any other nitpicking asshole like me. I will say this, the music in Girls Band Cry is... serviceable. I'm not a fan of its production, however. It's overly compressed, often has a lot going on, and is a notable victim of the loudness war. Just... I don't know, just look at this waveform, man. It's ridiculously loud and crushed like my head between Lancer Artorias Booba. Doesn't help that I don't know the Japanese language to any competent degree, so I rely on the musical qualities to carry the load rather than the lyrics. And I gotta say, it's definitely made for TV, well sung, well played, J-Rock alright. I'm not gonna put this on my phone to listen to while I'm on break at work, nor am I gonna listen to these songs multiple times other than for the purposes of this review. The production and mixing alone deters me from that. Then again, I'm not the biggest fan of J-Rock, so it takes quite a bit to latch on to me. Togenashi Togeri are no number girl. No Asian kung fu generation. Not even a mass of the fermenting dregs. Their music leaves no real impression on me outside of context, and if this were a real band, I'd skip this material without a second thought. But. Is that really the point? Girls Band Cry is yet another story about music and the people behind it that barely tries to tackle the process of actually making music. The anime literally brushes past any of that stuff through brief montages, but it's not necessarily its main driving force to begin with. In fact, most stories about a band, real or fictitious, are rarely ever about the music but very much about the people. Nina, Momoka, Subaru, Tomo, and Rupa are the group we spend time with, albeit with Nina as the main heroine in this tale that goes through its highs and lows. Coming to Tokyo after a seemingly cushy life in the country, she comes face to face with destiny as Momoka enters the fray, free-spirited and rocking her sick-ass guitar, once being a member of Nina's favorite band, Diamond Dust before leaving due to differences in where the band should go as explored piece by piece in multiple episodes. From there, after hijinks ensue, a friendship is formed, drama turns its head, and the once diminished drive to create comes rushing back. A band is formed as we meet the others, forming what's initially called Shin Kawasaki, before later renaming themselves Togenashi Togeri. It's clear Nina's arc is only but a piece of this cake, for Momoka's desire to outstage Diamond Dust along with Nina, essentially creating her version of that band in the process, 
The Subaru's motivation to defy her grandmother's wishes for her to be an actress, to pursue music as a drummer, to Tomo and Rupa, previously experienced musicians who aimed for the lofty goal of playing at the Budokan, with Rupa being especially interesting considering the show's intent to leave most of the details a mystery. But Nina remains the main star, and though I did find her primary motive to be somewhat deaf, and with even the story finding this to be the case considering her yearning to never back down in her pursuit to beat Diamond Dust at their own game causes problems than it solves, it's everything outside of this aspect that not only manages to feel realistic, but even manages to avoid plenty of pitfalls that would otherwise make her character unlikable to her past. She's stubborn, but idealistic. She believes in her own cause while still acknowledging that it can sometimes get in the way, or when considering her backstory, lead to misfortunate outcomes. Her arc with her parents, shockingly, is not unbearable or one-sided for the sake of creating drama. They're human beings, much like her, and I love how that aspect ended with a compromise rather than a fight. It's Nina's folks accepting that while her goals aren't what they want from her, they can't really stop her, nor should they force her to quit being in a band in the first place. It's her life, and they come to terms with that. It's stuff like this, the human element of the show, that I absolutely adored when it has time for it. Momoka opening up to others about her past, Subaru being torn between two potential paths in her life, Tomo's often stone-faced perfectionist personality becoming a strength rather than a fault, and Rupa? Well, the show doesn't necessarily delve too much into her, but it's obvious through some scenes and brief flashbacks that there's sorrow behind her smile and hopeful personality. As I was watching Girls Band Cry, I was very much glued from episode to episode, so much so that I would, in some instances, literally lose sleep I could use for work the next day, if only to watch one more episode. Granted, this is when the show has the time to flesh things out, which, due to the 13 episode limit, with no current plans for a follow-up season or any other project in development, is inconsistent. I love the potential of everyone's arcs, though more attention was paid to certain characters than others. Subaru's arc of defying her grandmother is solved off-screen without much detail into how it concluded, for example, and I would have liked more from Tomo and Rupa, especially Rupa, but a few instances of superfluous melodrama aside, I have no real complaints about any of our cast necessarily outside of the few that could have had their own episodes dedicated to them if the time was allowed. It feels like we only just scraped half of the barrel with some of them due to Nina being so prominent. Because of that, the plot itself tends to wave off some potentially interesting conflicts. I would have loved an entire subplot dedicated to, say, Rupa, as her half South Asian ancestry is brought up as a sore spot for her and a point of contention in the eyes of xenophobic assholes for not being 100% Japanese. It's presented in the story as something to flesh out, but we have to move along because there's no time for that. She's not the main character after all. Girls Band Cry is also surprisingly, dare I say, progressive for an anime of its kind as well. And I don't mean the wah wah pronouns and bio everything is offensive sort of progressivism either. There's literally the hint of, if not the outright declaration of same sex romantic interest handled in a surprisingly grounded, very adult and understanding direction that you don't often see in shows like this. Either played for comedy or downright overreactive in lesser anime. And I very much prefer things be handled this way. The show is also a visual marvel in the anime sphere. From Land of the Lustrous, to Beastars, to now this. We've come so far from the shitty CG dragon from Fate 2006. I knew going in that Girls Band Cry was primarily a CGI show with a hybrid use of 2D imagery for background or unimportant elements like extras, items, etc. And I am st still blown away by how good this show looks. Everyone is so fluid and expressive to a point that I can barely imagine this being 2D, while still capturing a traditional anime style. The concert scenes in particular, when they do happen anyhow, are immaculately crafted, well directed with excellent lighting, virtual cinematography, expressiveness, and life, as you'd obviously expect from a real concert with crowds actively cheering and moving along to the music, recording on their phones and reacting in a way that, if it were 2D, 
would be a nightmare to capture in the same exact way. Primarily CG anime, visually anyway, has gotten really good over the years, excluding the abortion that was Exxon, of course, and Girls Band Cry is just the latest herald of this movement of using the technology to go places that would be either too difficult or time-consuming for traditional hand-drawn 2D animation. It's eye candy, but it's definitely eye candy with a purpose, because yeah, while the music isn't my cup of tea, the purpose behind the music, the role the music plays in the grander picture of the girls' band cry, cannot be ignored. Yes, Toganashi Dogeri would fail as a real-life band. They are no queens of the Stone Age. Yes, this is generic J-pop through and through, made for an anime that you may or may not like, with production and mixing that I don't particularly like as an audiophile. No, I can't let you listen to said music in this video. I'll get copyright claimed or worse by Universal Music Japan. I don't want that. But one has to look past the objective realities to instead think about the subjective purpose. What is the purpose of the music? What does it serve to the broader picture of the narrative that it's attached to? What is Toganashi Togeri to this plot? What is Diamond Dust's purpose to this plot? It's then, and only then, in my perspective anyway, the music finally works. Not as the highlight, but as the connective tissue that ties Girls Band Cry together as each character, through their flaws and troubles, find their reason to make music. To be a band. To be Toganashi Togeri. I absolutely enjoyed Girls Band Cry when taken as a whole. There may not ever be a follow-up, but if there is, I'll be there to watch it, to listen to it, so long as the purpose behind it all remains just as convincing as it was here. You know, these past several reviews I've made, including the non-anime ones, the last time I felt truly miserable watching something was Black Rock Shooter, Dawnfall. It's been a while since I've subjected myself to something bad. It's mostly been good or at least okay these past few years. It's good to watch things that make you glad. But talking about things that make you glad doesn't necessarily make for something entertaining or the like. Tell you what, I propose to you, the viewer, that I will, one of these days, break the streak of reviewing things neutrally or positively, and finally go review something truly, TRULY shitty. And I think I know what it might be. Like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, God damn it! What? I don't like it. Don't like what? The whole like, comment, and subscribe thing. Feels like I'm, I don't know, kicking a puppy or something. Nonsense! Don't you want to grow your platform? I guess, but good. Now say like, comment, and subscribe. You f*** this off!